Welcome to Hack Counter Hack. My name is Charlie Belmer. I'm the founder of Golem Technologies. I'm going to walk you through a common attack scenario known as SQL injection, how it actually works on a website, some of the things you can do with it uh, if you find a vulnerable website, and how to defend your websites against this kind of attack. So what I'm going to cover today is first I'm going to walk you through an actual live production website. I'm going to show you how to detect, uh, some common ways to detect SQL injection vulnerabilities. I'm going to show you how to exploit that vulnerability to pull out some database data that should be se secret. I'm going to show you how to, how to turn that exploited data into a actual username and password combination so you can log in as a user you do not own. And then I'm going to go through and show you how to actually find these problems in your source code and to remove these problems from your source code so you're not vulnerable to SQL injection on your websites. So the website that I'm using today it's called Where Hearts Go. This is an actual production website. It's used for online dating and social networking. I have a local copy of the code base that I've obtained and I've made a couple of modifications to make it a little bit easier to illustrate the vulnerability. The first modification I did is I turned on live error checking. So what happens is on the production website if it finds an error it'll just return back an error message to the user such as you know an error has occurred we're sorry blah 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 but that's not going to give any information to an attacker the attacker will be left guessing about a little bit more about what has to be done uh, but because I modified it it's actually going to display the full SQL query that it was trying to execute back to the page which is going to give us some extra leverage in how to execute the proper attack I also created my own user account called the Gollum Technologies for illustration purposes with a very weak password to make the cracking of the password a little bit faster. Um, and this is the, the basic profile page. I didn't fill anything out. Uh, you can just see my username there is, is Gollum Technologies. Uh, and, and the other interesting thing to note about this site is, you know, as I said, it's on the local host, profile.php, so we know that it's using PHP uh, as a web technology. And then ID is 454. So I'm guessing that this whole profile is pulled off of this ID, this 454. So the first thing I want to do is verify that that's true. So I'm going to just modify this and say, well, what happens if I enter 453? Is that, going to, is that going to give me a different user? And if it does, then I know that you know, that ID is directly indicated to the user that I'm pulling up. So let's go back to ID 454. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can get to that 453 using another method. Instead of just giving it 453, I want to try to force the server to do arithmetic. So I'm going to ask it to do 454 minus 1. So if it is doing arithmetic, that should return 453, and I should see that other user's profile. Uh, it's actually not going to return that user's profile. So there is some filtering going on on the back side. We don't know exactly what kind of filtering is happening, but we know that it's not doing arithmetic. So the next thing I'm going to try is another is a common SQL operator, just a single quote, uh, to see if a single quote causes any kind of errors. And in this case, it will cause an error. So since error checking is on, it displays the errors back to the user. Then we're going to see here, here's the actual SQL query, which is you know very useful for actually generating an attack. Now, you're not going to see this in not live production websites. You're just going to see a sample, you know, we're sorry message. And, and because of that, you know, you're going to have to do some additional guesswork. Uh, but here's the actual query that it's trying to execute. Now, from this information, I'm able to drop an attack string. Let me walk you through this. If you know a little bit of SQL, what I'm doing here is I'm using the user ID 454, and I'm entering, ending it with a single quote, and then I'm adding an additional parameter to the query that's being run, 1 equal 2, which is never true, so it returns 0 rows. I want to replace all the profile data with data that I select. So I'm here, you know, select a bunch of random information, but the password field uh, from the users, and I'm going to use the same user ID. So let's use this instead. Let's see what we get back. I'm just going to paste it right into my browser. Browser's an ideal attack tool here. Let's see what we get back. I should be replacing the username with the user's password. And that's exactly what I did. You'll notice the password is not clear text. The password is actually stored in the database as a hash of the password. So I need to do an additional step and crack this password. But now I have the username it's Gollum Technologies, and I have the password hash. So I'm only one step away now uh, from actually taking over this user entirely. Now, if this was an admin user, I could have admin rights as soon as I crack the password. 
I didn't have to get the password information out if I knew there was some table called credit cards. I could go through and ask for the credit card number and the expiration date of every user in the database and systematically go through and pull out that information, which is why SQL injection is so dangerous. SQL also often allows you to write directly to the file system, so I could write a virus file into the home page uh, instead of this. You know, I could modify existing pages, potentially. That's why it's so dangerous. In this case, I'm just pulling out a password. Now let's see how we can finish off this attack. There's many ways to crack passwords. I personally use Kane Enable. So here's Kane Enable. Uh, you don't really necessarily know what kind of, of password hash is going to be used. Some of the most common are MD5 and SHA. Through experimentation, I, I, you know, I happen to know this is a SHA-1 hash, so I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the list. If you don't know what kind of hash it is, uh, you can ba you know, make a, an educated guess, or you can just go through and check and make sure that it, it fits all the parameters. Uh, it won't accept a bad hash. Um, so here's the SHA-1 hash. I want to do a dictionary attack. Uh, dictionary attacks will work on usually more than half of all passwords in a database. I'm just going to start this. It may take a couple of minutes. While this is running through, it's basically going to check a bunch of common words. It's going to try common replacements. It's going to add lowercase, uppercase. You can see all the options over here. I usually run it like with the default options the first time. If it doesn't find everything, then you may want to do the case permutations. It's going to do a whole bunch of additional checks. It'll catch a few more passwords. There's a bunch of tools out there that are open source. You can download them. They're, they're pretty good. Uh, I highly recommend Kane Enable. It's, it's open source free. You can go you know, crack these password hashes pretty quickly. All right, and we cracked it. So now taking a look, we can see that the plain text of this hash is Gollum. So I didn't use a very complex password. The more complex the password the user is using, the longer this will take. And potentially, you won't be able to use it with a dictionary attack if they have a very secure password. Uh, and then it's usually not useful to do a brute force attack, but this will also do brute force attacks against various passwords. Um, so password cracking is a whole other discussion, which we won't get into. Now we have the user password, uh, and we could proliferate through the database, getting every user password that we wanted. Uh, and that is the SQL injection vulnerability attack. Now I'm going to go through how we're going to prevent this attack. All right, so let's jump into the source code and find out why we're facing issues with SQL injection. Uh, what I did here is if you look, profile.php was the page we were looking at. And as you come into profile.php, there's a section towards the top, which checks to see if there's a get parameter ID, if it's set. And uh, it checks here to make sure it's not equal to the current user. If it's equal to the current user, it may have some different functionality. Uh, and then what it does is it simply creates this variable ID from that get parameter and calls user load user. So there's nothing being done, no filtering being done on the ID parameter from get. It just passes it in. Uh, and then if we go over to user.php, what we'll see is uh, it comes in with load user ID and the condition is user ID equal ID. So again, no filtering and then load user condition and scrolling to where load user condition comes in, we can see that this is simply appended to the end of the query. So there is no checking the entire time. It is just uh, grabbing that data directly from the user and placing it right into a query. And that's why SQL injection can occur. And as we can see, it'll go through and actually fill up an array with the data, uh, which is how the attacker can inject some information. Now what I did is I went and I created two additional files, profilesecure.php and usersecure.php, to illustrate the changes that we'd have to make to this code to make it secure. So it would not be vulnerable to any sort of attack. If we look at profile secure, uh, the first thing that I did is uh, instead of grabbing it directly from the get parameter, just ID, I made sure it's an intval. So in the comments, I just said infal ensures a valid integer, but returns zero for non-integers. So we may get an ID of zero, um, and, and you know users could still try attacks of invalid IDs, such as negative numbers, trying to do uh, integers that are too big. Um, and just to make sure that nothing can attack this site, we do an additional check to make sure the integer is valid. So we just make sure that it is an integer. We make sure that the ID is greater than zero and that the ID is less than the max int. Now, if you had other rules on this, this form parameter, like if it was a zip code or something like that, you would want to check to make sure that it conformed to what you expect for a zip code. 
or if possible, use a white list of values to make sure that it can come in. So if you know that it's always going to be a value between 1 and 10, just make sure that it's a value between 1 and 10 that's an integer, and that'll make sure that you only get valid data. So when it gets passed over to user ID, then we can actually load up the user. And if I don't find that, I just trigger an error. Uh, you know, you may want to have something here to actually try to catch hackers as they attack the application, but I'm just going to trigger an error for now, which is going to send an error message back to the administrator. And then in user secure, what I did is I didn't change the, the initial load user by ID, but when it calls the master function load user with a condition, I added this MySQLi real escape string. That's just going to make sure that anything that's passed in from any function, not just the load by ID, but for any function that's going to call this, the condition we know will not cause a SQL injection, at least according to the PHP manual. So, from here, uh, I should be pretty safe against SQL injection attacks, at least in this area. Now, one thing that I could do, which would be even better than this, would be to parameterize my query. So instead of writing a query out like this and appending a condition, if I'm able to, to rewrite the query into a single query string where I won't be appending multiple conditions, or changing the conditions over time, or changing the tables, I would actually create a parameterized query and insert the parameters values after the fact. And that is the most secure way to query a database. So there you have it. That's how you prevent SQL injection. I first walk through what a SQL injection attack is, how you can find SQL injection attacks, how to exploit those attacks, and here I've shown you how to prevent those attacks from occurring in the first place. So if you have a website, Go out, take a look through your code, make sure you're escaping user data. Thanks. To find out more, check out golemtechnologies.com. We've got tons of articles, not just SQL injection. We'll scan your website, we'll find if you have these kind of problems, and we'll help you fix them.